case study, the Antiques Road Sale, yeah. Dependent Personality Disorder. It's the Antiques Road Sale, this week from the beautiful city of Mormon Corpse, Wisconsin. <laughs> What an interesting item. Ooh, 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 they, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This, ooh. You can go ahead and tell me about the item, please. Ooh. This is my father's hydrogen bomb. Why do I sound like this? Ooh, ooh, let me find my voice, hold on. Take your, take your time. Oh, okay, it's my father's hydrogen bomb. Sorry, I have a cold. I do too. <gasps> Bless you. Let's get a look at this hydrogen bomb. Boy, it sure looks like, see the stripe here? No. Let me turn it around. I see it now. That tells me that this is a fake, I'm sorry to say. But does it even work? Because I have plans. I, I'm not really an expert on whether or not it works. I'm a, I, I specialize in authenticity, and this is definitely in... Uh, somebody made this, or it was manufactured after the fact. The major atomic bomb manufacturers were Levitz and Stintz, the Crutch Brothers, and a lady named Pauline who worked out of Mesa, Arizona. So how much would you say it's worth? Maybe ten to twenty thousand oh, dollars. A regular uh, one of those makers that would fetch over seven hundred thousand well, dollars. Sometimes into the millions. I'm very sorry. That's okay. Uh, do you want to go out? I'm already dating you. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and have a seat here. Tell me about your item. Well, I have a series of mores and social beliefs that were my great-grandfather's. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm wondering what that can get me, because they, I mean, they're fucking old. What part of the country would you say these are from before uh, I know? The South, oh. the Midwest. Uh, Real uh, really, old. Really old. Yeah, not worth a fuck anywhere, really. Uh -huh. You can't use it. It's kind of like using a typewriter to send an email. <laughs> but I want to see if, you know, because they're fully intact. Uh huh. And so I can't talk to anybody. <laughs> let me take a look at these. Hold on, let me get my um, loop. My jeweler's loop. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is how I think the world was created. 6,000 years. Yeah, huh? that's, a, that's a caveman on a dinosaur. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry to say, just like our last segment, yeah. this is an artificial caveman on a dinosaur. Oh. This is made by Scientologists, not the Christian God. Oh, no, you yeah. can't. That's even before my grandfather was a person. <laughs> he was still a ziggot. Or whatever you scientists call it. There's a fellow water skin on the back of the Ark Look, of, of the Covenant. I know you came here to sell your social mores, but your posture is, is really something I can, I can appraise at a high value. Hold on. That's also something, well, I guess more of my grandmother's, but I mean, them, both of them shared it hell at the end of their lives. They looked almost identical. <laughs> Well, uh, Except I, his hair was longer. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, what, what did you bring in today? I was digging around in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> and I put the shovel in the dirt, and then I heard it, I heard it clang, and then I was like, uh-oh, something down there. And so I started digging and digging and digging deeper than I usually dig. And then I done found this bottle that I'm pretty sure has got a genie in it. <laughs> It sounds like you have a lot of blockage in your throat, but I, I think what you said was you think there's a genie in this. I think there's a genie in this here bottle that I found in the backyard. Now, uh, in this bottle of Royal Crown Cola. 
That's right. Tell, tell me a little about what you think this bottle, uh, how old it is, where do you think it comes from? I think it's from GD Times. <laughs> And uh, it's got to be worth, like, more than, uh, you know, like, a pair of shoes with the toes that curl up at the end. Because that was an expensive item at GD time. Here, shake it around. You'll hear him in there. That thing. Knock it off. He's an awful complainer. He's always whining. Yeah. Your, your ventriloquism isn't that good, sir. What's that? You can probably, you can probably get this bottle uh, on the black market, 15 cents. Point me to this black market. <laughs> well, David, thank you for seeing me. Well, sure. So what I've got here, let me explain. I'm in the business. I work for Crutch Brothers. Oh, okay. <laughs> But we've been branching out, and I want to show you this thing. This is a complete set of dental impressions by four of the five surviving members of the Funky Bunch. Yeah. Take a look. Well, just, put, just put them on there. Don't touch them. Try them on. Oh. I don't know why they're damp. Yeah. They're pre-dampened. That's what we at Crutch Brothers offer now. Now, you said um, the surviving members of the Funky The surviving Bunch? members. Which are these? Which ones? Yeah. If you would just name the... Well, there's the lead singer. Is that Marky Mark? No. Who's that? It doesn't matter. I know their later work. I discovered them, oh, three years ago. Sure, okay. Oh, okay. So that's the, the blonde one. Yeah, lead singer. You can tell by the teeth, can't you? I, I, not, I mean, I'm not really a great judge of these types of things. I've, I haven't seen a lot of... Well, then I came to the wrong person. Well, I mean... These I obviously... thought you were David. I, I am David. Yeah. Uh, obviously, these are uh, well-crafted, and they're very accurate. Thank you. You know, that'll get you everywhere, that kind of flattery. Um... Are we dating now? No. Oh. I guess I'd just like to know a little bit more about how you came to have these and also why you say the surviving members of the Funky Bunch. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, that's just what I hear. I don't keep up on the Funky Bunch. I discovered them recently, three, three years, years ago, ago, as I said. <laughs> and then I sort of fell out of favor with them. So I like to assume that one of them is at least dead to me. <laughs> he has not returned any of my notes. Any of your notes? I said notes. <laughs> How are they sent? My mule. Um, and how did you end up with these dental impressions? Well, I work for Crutch Brothers. I don't know what else you need to well, know. I, don't know. I, guess I, could... I treasure them, and now I've hit hard financial times. All what right. do you want me to say? I you mean... want me to broadcast it to the rest of this road no, sale? that's fine, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I need money. You don't have to. This is my prized possession, and I'm giving it up. Four right. of the five, who wants to buy? All right, sir. sir. I hope you're happy. I, I'm, well... You are David. I, yes, I am okay. David. I would say that based on the, on the craftsmanship... Thank you. And that they... They're in very good condition. Thank you. How old would you say they are? Oh, I'd say they was three years old. Okay. When I started okay. getting interested, I invited them all down to make the impression. You want me to repeat that? Yes, I do. <laughs> Three years ago, I became very fascinated, obsessed... Yes. With the Funky Bunch. With the Funky I Bunch. I understand that part. But only the surviving members. Yes, I understand that <laughs> Okay, so... So I want to know what they're worth. I feel like there's a part in the middle that we're not talking about. Oh, you want to know the process of making them? Yes, I would like to know how you come to have these. Did you say you invited them yeah. over? Oh, yeah, by then... mule. They had to ride mules to get to me. Okay. 
And so the, the members, the surviving members of the Funky Bunch did show up at your house on muleback. No, in my office. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. What do you, I don't know what kind of person you think I am. That's not, that's neither here nor there. Okay. And so they willingly... Well... <laughs> Hello, and uh, welcome. Hello, sir. Uh, oh, it, it's gonna be okay. What's, what's the matter? Well, I was in the lunchroom today, and I had a pudding cup I was really looking forward to. Okay. And Danny Mann came over and traded me this. He said, give me that pudding cup, and I'll give you this one-of-a-kind, authentic sword from Genghis Khan. I was really looking forward to that pudding cup. Well, I think you may have gotten the better of the deal. Let me see. Well, I don't there. know. Who needs a dumb old sword anyway? And who the heck is Genghis Khan? Well, I think he needed a sword. For what? Slaughtering thousands of people. I, I guess that sounds pretty cool. Right, pudding is, is a lot less effective. It's pretty good, though. I like eating it. What flavor was it? Chocolate and vanilla. <laughs> it was a swirl? You've had it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. if I could just trade this sword or whatever it is from Genghis or whoever he is for a pudding cup, I'd really appreciate it. Ah. Uh... I don't know if I have any. I mean, I have butterscotch. Who wants that? I know. I should have, I should well, have maybe, mentioned it. How much is it worth? Because if I can get just go to the store and maybe buy a pudding cup, if it's worth anything at all. Yeah, well, let me see here. Okay, do you see the red stripe on it? No. I don't either. There, is, there isn't one, which is a good sign. Okay. All right, so I think this is worth well, $3.99. See you at home, Dad. <laughs> That's the antiques road sale where an old plate is as good as your fate on a Russian roulette date that you went on because you're single again. <laughs> Me? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>